Welcome back everyone. I finally have everything I need to get Carter's harness finished. So I have Carter's harness laid out uh, with everything that's going on. Obviously it took a lot longer for me to get my extra heat shrink and the, um, the loom and everything I needed. But it's finally all here. I have some time to myself and I'm going to use this time to finish Carter's harness up. I'm going to try to give you guys pretty much as best of a walkthrough as I can on um, kind of redoing your harness. Now there is I bought some supplies that I wasn't too happy with, so the, the harness is going to be done. Uh, and I also want to mention that it's going to take a long time. There's going to be a lot of probably time lapse in this video or a lot of jumping back and forth because this is kind of like wire to wire to wire. It, it's going to take a long time. So just if you're not crazy about time lapses, you can skip through them. Um, I'm just going to try to give as much information in between. So I'm going to show you how the harness is laid out. I showed it to you on the engine. Now I'm going to show it laid out on the bench. Um, the grounding uh, distribution or the, the ground junction. I'm going to show what I'm going to do with that. And uh, I'll walk you through it as I go along. I honestly don't remember where I left you guys off. So I'm just going to start from the beginning. Uh, I removed the rest of the loom off the back of the harness. So this is where we would have our... Uh, our ECU pins, so this is all exposed, kind of just to like right here, that's all I need. I'll, I'll leave this tape on, you're not gonna see that. I put zip ties to try to keep the harness tight because the harness already has a memory from, you know, you're talking almost 20 years. This is from an O2, I'm assuming. It's like 18 years, no, it's, it's, it's 18 years, yeah, I'm right. About it, just how the harness has always been laid. So I'm trying to reshape it and I've zip tied it. I've put just little bits of tape all through it just so it can kind of learn the shape I want it to learn. Um, I have this long harness or this wire right here that I already started on this slightly, but this was his, uh, his EVAP uh, connection. He's not running that anymore. So all this wire actually ran all the way to the ECU pins. I removed it from the ECU. I did that off camera or off the ECU connector, but I left the one ground cable or wire on the junction so I can demonstrate how to deep in because the junction is so big you can actually see in good detail how you need to deep in so i left this here for you guys again this is going to move all the way to where the ecu pins are so i'm going to be cutting one wire at a time and extending it all through this harness until this giant block ends up back here so you don't see this block here and then pretty much it's just uh deep in each connector one at a time run loom shrink wrap it and and all that so right now we're going to i'm just going to get into how deep pinning works just because i want to start getting rid of this in case you guys have never done any kind of deep pinning before here's just a kind of a quick crash course on what you're going to do deep pinning is just you're going to be pulling pins out from their connectors and how they pull out that's what i'm going to be explaining on every connector so i'll grab this connector right here you can see there's this little white uh cover or a lot it's a lock it's what they call it you always need to remove these locks first so tools you're going to need you can use any pick set pick sets are basically what everybody has they also make dedicated deep pinning tools so i have a variety of uh, deep pinning tools so this is just different ends because uh, each connector is different so you never know what kind of ends you're going to need these are the ones i use but for today or for right now i'm going to show you guys using picks so for this junction block right here uh this whole black piece it's a cover so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be removing this cover because I want to get rid of this uh, black wire or this black ground right here, which is the uh, part of this EVAP harness. So I'm just going to pick this guy down here. Probably going to need two picks. So one there. There we go. This guy here. Okay, there we go. So now we got the cover off. And uh, there's going to be actually another cover, which is uh, these two guys right here. These are separate covers because you can see we don't even see the pins. So we're going to figure out what side we're on. So this wire is on this side. I'm going to be taking this gray one off. This looks like it just lifts right up. So we'll work that up. Okay. So now that's gone. Now we've exposed all of our pins in here. Once we find, this is the, okay, this will be easier. One, two, it's the third wire in. So we're gonna go 
one, two, three. It's this guy right here. So I want to try to get a better angle so you can see exactly what I'm going to do. Looking from this angle, you can see there's these little hooks right here. These are what hook your terminals in. So what you need to do is actually use the pick and pull the hook back a little bit so you can pull the terminal out. So let me see if I use a straight terminal right here. So we're on the third one. I'm going to get my hand on the wire too. So all I do is pry this guy back and that's it. Now I was able to pull this pin out. And then just to give you guys kind of a closer look. So now you can see the empty slot. If I put this in here and I uh, kind of go back. That's all you're doing. When you're deep pinning, you're just pulling this lock back and then you pull a wire. But when you're doing uh, little guys like this, it's kind of hard to see the lock in there because you don't have this exposed view that I had. So when you're doing these, it, it, you're just kind of wanting to get as thin of a pick to get in there. Once you feel it stop, you just lift slightly and then you can pull the wires out. So that's just a quick tutorial on uh, deep pinning. So now we've got our locks and our cover back on. I'm gonna be starting with this junction right here. I kind of want to extend this and get this out of the way. Once this is out of my way, I can start looming everything. And um, just to give you a simple explanation on, on how I'm doing this. So this junction splits two ways. Now it has these grounds coming from the front of the harness, and then it has grounds going back to the ECU connectors. So these, these section, or this section right here that goes back to the ECU connectors, I'm not touching this section because it runs the way I want to pull this whole junction. So all I would need to do is cut the tape off going backwards and then I can pull it, but I won't be able to pull it because these guys run this opposite way. So what I'm going to be doing is just taking one wire at a time, cutting it, and then I'm going to be running a new length of wire from the one end that I cut and pulling the new length all the way back to the ECU connectors. So kind of getting my, uh, my length of wire that I need and then soldering it back, well soldering this one end and then soldering back to the other end of the wire that I cut. So when I cut it, they're split, new wire is gonna be in the center and then I can pull it. Sounds a little, bit of a little bit confusing, but when I do it, you'll understand what I'm doing. And when I pull everything in one shot, then it'll be a lot easier to see and explain it. So I'm gonna do one right now and then I'm gonna time lapse the rest because this is gonna take a long time. So to get started, I'm gonna just pick one wire that's running to the front of the harness. It's gonna be this guy, kind of right here. I'm going to get my new wire. It's the similar gauge, same gauge as the harness. And all I'm gonna do is just kind of run this wire out to a rough length of where I want it to go. So we're gonna be from, let's say here, So we're gonna go about right here where all these match. That's where I'm cutting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use this length of wire to get the how get the length of this, and I'm just gonna cut however many I need. So I'm gonna count like maybe 10, 10 strips of strips of this same length of wire. So they're all the same, they're all gonna meet right here. And then we're gonna cut this wire and extend it. So we got our length of cable here. We're gonna make our first cut, trying to leave enough on both ends. So I'm just gonna cut it right in the middle. That should be good enough. Strip this off. Figured a closer up look is better. So you can see the, uh, I'm gonna solder it. I just kind of push them together. When I push them together, I twist the ends. So now I'm just letting the uh, soldering iron warm up right now and then we're just going to you know solder I'm not going to try to go in depth on how to solder either there's tons of videos on how to do that so I'm just going to let this warm up then we're going to heat this up solder this together and then connect the other end to uh, the other end 
right here. So that way we know which one goes where, because then at the end, since we have all the correct length of a wire that we need, when we're done, we should just be able to grab this and pull it all the way and it'll come to where I want it. our finished solder joint so now I'm going to run a piece of heat shrink tubing I should probably back this out I'm gonna run a piece of heat shrink tubing on this end well two pieces so that way I can just kind of keep it in the middle of the wire so they don't get hot slide it over this end solder this end put the heat shrink on there and then do this another nine more times I was gonna do a time lapse but it's kind of pointless I'll show you when I'm done I just looked at the time I've been in this garage for four hours straight doing this harness and moving or extending these wires i didn't even realize it's been four hours when you're doing stuff like this time flies by so quick but i finished extending them so i want to show you my idea or the way i was trying to explain it now you can actually see it and it makes more sense i ran out of black wire i had to use some white wire i actually had to call carter to bring me some more black wire because i ran out um, but this is this is the mess. I um, I started to take the covers off of the junction block again just because there was like three wires in this junction block that actually pulled the only way. I, I haven't done this in so long, I forgot. There was the ones that I had to extend on, the, on this side that went to the front and then the rest of the bulk went up to the coil area. So all this other uh, siding that I needed to do was all from the coil and then there was three wires that pulled this way which are uh here like actually it's four wires that i was able to pull all the way down there so once you finally extend everything this is what i'm talking about so now you can just grab your bulk harness with everything that's been extended and you can pull it backwards so we're gonna do this nicer but this is uh this is the idea now so now that junction block that was here is extended all the way with the uh, ECU cables and connectors all the way at the back over here. So that's the that's the main idea. That's the best way I can explain it. Now, the way to tighten the, or tidy this up a little better is because all of these are extended now. What I'm gonna do is actually de-pin each wire one at a time, pull it all the way out, and then I'm going to like wrap it around to uh to go back this way that way i'm not just like bunching this and zip tying it i'm actually going to wrap it around the harness each wire and try to make it a little tighter so i'll probably show you that just because that it, it's you won't understand it until you actually see me doing it and then you'll see how much cleaner it'll make everything man that's like another two hours after that last clip you just saw i got everything sorted out the way i want it so i'm gonna leave that clip in because uh it gives you a a representation of what I did but I ended up redoing what you just saw in that last clip so when I was pulling it out one at a time and um, like routing it uh, around the original harness what ended up happening happening is that ended up making the uh, the overall length of the wire shorter the extensions that I made so when everything got to the end that junction block was actually not really near the um, the ECU connectors, it was kind of like seven inches farther away. So without having this in the body right now, I don't know where the junction block would have ended up. So what I did was I marked every wire um, in their corresponding spot, I put a little piece of tape on it so I knew where it went and I just took all of them out. So I took all the, uh, the pins out of the junction block, pulled them all back and then I pulled the, the rest, uh, I pulled it back to the ECU pins a little cleaner. I was a little more methodical about how I was routing it and wrapping it around the harness. And now they're a lot farther back near the ECU connectors. And um, I'm kind of done for the day. <laughs> I'm tired, it's late. We're gonna pick this up tomorrow, but I wanna show you where we're leaving off. So now I also put tape down, well not tape down, but I've wrapped the uh, the harness in tape just to kind of hold the shape I want. But here's uh, here's what it looks like, it's all wrapped around. Now, if it looks thicker, it obviously is because, well, originally all these wires weren't running back this way. So everything was kind of just met up around here and it was only three wires or three or four wires that pulled all the way back, which were these guys. 
So you're talking a four wire difference to probably another 15 extra wires. This is obviously going to get thicker. There's no way around that. But it just runs all the way. So here's uh, all the markings that I've made so I know which, uh, which pin goes into which location for the, uh, the junction block right here. And they're all even. They all meet up around this area. ECU connectors are right here. So I know this is definitely gonna be behind the dash, so I'm not worried about it. And then these are just the extra ones that I pulled back. I could just uh, clean them up, zip tie them any way I want. But this is where we're leaving off for today. Tomorrow morning, we're going to start throwing the loom down and then depinning each one of these. The next day, I'm back in the garage. We're gonna be finishing up this harness, hopefully today. Uh, when I ended that clip, I just connected the rest of the uh, the grounds to the junction, to the ground junction. So I'll show you how that at the end, like well, not at the end, I'll show you how it finished up. And right now I'm gonna be explaining the materials that I'm using, the loom, the size, and kind of a, the layout that I'm gonna go about it. And uh, I'll, I'll show you how I do a couple, like maybe three or four wires. I'll show you how to do it and then the finish, the finished product of it and then I'm just gonna go through the whole harness because it's gonna take me a long time if you haven't caught the drift of this whole tucking your own harness it takes a lot of time a lot of patience so it, I'm just gonna breeze through this so here's what the back of the harness looks like now after everything was routed better the way I liked it uh, my junction ended up here I still have all the tape on uh, the labels that I made I pulled each I pulled all the pins out as you saw I'm not sure if it matters which one goes where but just to be safe, I labeled them. Now that's back, so this is gonna, the loom's probably gonna come up to here, I think, because this is really bunched up over here, and this is all really under the dashboard. You're not gonna see it, so I, I'm not worried about it. The loom I'm using, so I'm using two styles of loom. Originally, when I did my own harness, I used this kind of loom right here, which is, uh, it's an expandable braided loom. And what that means is, there's no slits in it or anything. What you do is you actually expand it so you can kind of push this back and it'll expand open just like a, uh, I'm gonna need two hands. You would get your loom and then you just kind of expand it backwards like this. So I'm just pushing it backwards and you can kind of get it to fatten up a little bit. And then you would hold it, you could feed your wires through and then you would just kind of keep working it that way. So this, I used a quarter inch for um, all the small connectors. So kind of like this, where it's only two or three wires max. That's what I've used. But on my old harness, I used expandable braid to loom on the whole harness and it didn't come out that good. The problem you run into when just using expandable loom is you have to really deep in every connector on this harness, especially when you're getting on the big section, which is where we kind of did all our wrapping of the wires for the grounds you really need to expand that loom very wide and you gotta get through all the ECU plugs, you have to get through all the transitions because you gotta remember there's tons of wires that are splitting everywhere out of the loom and you can't stick them out unless you poke a hole in the loom and you kinda have to be exact and then you gotta find a way to seal it. And I, I did it on mine, I didn't really like it so I bought split loom or split braided loom now and I'm gonna try that on all the transitions. So that's what this is. This is split braided loom. This is half inch and three eighths, I believe. So what it is, it's uh, it's coiled up, but you don't have to expand it. You just, it's got a split in the middle of it. So it'll open up just like that. And then you can just kind of put it over your harness like this. You get the idea. You just expand it over the harness and then the rest of it will coil around it. And then you can put a couple zip ties where you want to hold it and where they meet in different transitions. You could put shrink wrap, that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I put this tape down just to try to hold my layout. That's, that's kind of all I use the tape for underneath is just to kind of keep my layout and keep my designs of where I want stuff to split. So kind of like here you can see I taped this because I wanted everything, this one to stop here. I got one coming out from the bottom. I wanted these guys to come here. So this is what I'm talking about transitions with the expandable one, this is just gonna be one straight piece and I wouldn't be able to pull these guys out unless I cut into the loom. With split one, I could just lay it over, give it a little, just a little slice in the split one because it'll split and this will be able to come out. So I wanna try this out. I've never used the split braid loom. Hopefully this works out with good success. 
what I'm going to show you probably, I might just start, I don't know, I'm going to pick a section of harness. Uh, I'm going to depin it, put the loom, put the braided loom, because I'm going to start with the, uh, the legs first. So never start with the body, in my opinion. I wouldn't start with that. I'm going to start with uh, all the single strands. So I might just like do this one here, then do this one here, just to get all the legs covered. And then at the end, I'm going to put the main sheet over the rest of the harness. I'm just gonna start with the uh, the middle of the harness right here. These legs, they're already out here, so I figured why not start. Key thing right now, okay? Take pictures of every connector. So every connector you're gonna start with, take a picture of it so you know what side each color wire goes on. This is where it's important, all right? You need to make sure you put these in the right spot. So I already took a picture of this connector. I'm gonna start with this guy. It's gonna go right in here. First thing we do, we gotta remove the lock on the inside to pin it. So it's gonna be this little white one. So we're just gonna get underneath just lift this lock out. Sometimes you can get it out like that. Other times you just gotta get it. All right, so now they got the lock out. So now we're exposing the pins on the inside. Remember, just like deep pinning, we're gonna go in. We're gonna lift the one side up. So we got the one side out. Now we're gonna do the second side. So now we got our guys out right now. This is where I'm gonna get my expandable loom. Now we're just going to force these guys in here. So once you get it pretty much about as far as you want to go, just feel to where the pins are so they're right here. I'm sure you have a good pair of scissors and you're just going to cut the loom off. All right? And now you can see at the bottom, the loom always frays all down here. So you're just going to trim all this fraying off just to give yourself a good ending point. So now we got all this off. Before you take these guys out, slide your heat shrink. Right now it's gonna be the easiest to slide over the whole loom. So just get a little bit of a heat shrink, how much you think you're gonna need. We're gonna use about that much. Okay, so now we can slide our heat shrink over all this. So we got all our extra material off at the bottom. Now we're gonna kinda of work our way down to get these terminals out. So we're gonna just cut this rest off up here. So you're gonna cut a piece of heat shrink that you're gonna be using so we can slide over all of this. This is gonna be the hard part, is trying to work your heat shrink back in over all the braided or all the, all the frays. So what I do is I just kind of twist it just to get it over everything. Pull everything back to where you want it. Slide your heat shrink all the way down. So I'm gonna flip the harness over so we can get down here. So now once our heat shrink is pretty much as far as we can get or where we need it to get, we can, uh, we can start heating this guy up. Just be careful you don't burn the rest of the wires. I use, I use a mini torch, it's quicker for me. What's recommended is a heat gun with a shield so you don't burn the other wires. This is what I use, all right? You don't have to comment saying I'm using the wrong thing. Now be careful because the braided loom will uh, kind of catch fire, not catch fire, but it's gonna melt quick. So you kind of want to watch the loom and just stay on the, on the heat shrink. And that's it. One thing I should mention, the heat shrink that I use is lined with uh, like a sealant on the inside of it. It's marine grade. Uh, I love that because once you shrink it, that sealant oozes out and it's, it's kind of watertight. So I've always used marine grade heat shrink it's kind of my secret if you want to say, but uh, it just keeps all the moisture out once that glue is melted and it comes out. So now we're left with our ends right here. This is my tip. I don't know about you guys, but when I go to put the connector back, I like to leave a little bit of the wire exposed so I can still see the colors on which side they are. In case you ever have to go back and do some diagnosing and you need to uh, back probe a pin or something, you know which color wire it is. You can see it. That's just my tip. Some people, they don't want to see any of the wires. so. Do it the way you feel more comfortable. But first we have to throw another piece of heat shrink. That way when we put the connector, we can slide the heat shrink back up. Here's some of the ends is exposed. I got the second piece of heat shrink already slid on here. Now we're gonna go to the picture so we can get the right orientation and click these guys in, put everything together and then slide the heat shrink, heat it up and the one leg is done. Push them in all the way until they click. Don't forget your little lock piece. 
Okay, push that guy in. Now we're just going to slide our heat shrink. That's right there. Keep this guy up. And that's it. We got our first leg done right here in our loom. I'll give you a closer look at it. So you can see at the top of the heat shrink, you can kind of see some of that glue that I was talking about that melts out. So you don't have to really worry about it too much at the top, but I like to worry about it kind of right here at the bottom. You can just see kind of the transition. It's heat shrink, some of that shiny glue material, and then the braided loom. But this is our, uh, our first leg. It goes all the way into the harness, shrink wrapped under there. And now what you're gonna do, you're just gonna do this same process for each of these legs and uh, until you get all the separate ones done, the coil ones, you're just gonna do everything like that. I'm gonna do all of that off camera. I can get it done a lot quicker off camera. And then once all of these are done, I'm gonna turn the camera back on so you can see each, each individual leg or which ones I did on their own with the quarter inch. And then we're gonna start laying the split loom over the rest of it. I wanna apologize about how this video has been turning out so far. So I'm just gonna give you guys a quick explanation of what's going on at this moment. This is obviously not the same day as the last clip you just saw. What's been happening with this harness is every little thing that I've been doing, I've been staring at it and looking at it and thinking like I can make it better. So then I order something else and then it takes another couple of days for that to come in. Then I make it better. And then it's kind of like the never ending pursuit of perfection, which is what's been going on with this harness. This harness is already like a weekend, like this whole video that you're seeing so far is already like within a week, not just like a consecutive days because I'm constantly ordering something. I can easily say this is going to be the best harness I've ever done. I'm just like really putting a lot into this harness and wanting to give it back to Carter. 100% and I can tell him like this is the best harness I've done so I'm going to show you guys what's happened a lot has happened off camera and I'm going to walk you through it. The coil section that goes all the way to your VTEC inputs your oil pressure your oil sending unit and your crank sensor connectors this whole section is done so basically how I started was I took off each uh, connector so that way I can slide this heat shrink over so I slid that tube all the way over with the connectors off slid it down here this is the expandable loom that I was or the split loom not the expandable this is the split loom that I was talking about and I just kept sliding heat shrink over with all the connectors off I went out I bought a label maker and I made labels for everything so now when you can see well if we can focus there you go so this is the crank sensor connector I have the uh, the VTC one, I didn't put one on the oil uh, sending unit, we know what that is. You have your, uh, your VTEC, VTEC pressure, your coils, it's taking a while to focus. Okay, there's your coil number one. And uh, that's pretty much, this section is all done. Again, shrink wrap was all thrown over once the connect, when the connectors were off. So. I did all the individual branches like I said I was going to do. When I did that, I'd make sure I put the label on so I knew and I didn't need the connector. Took pictures of it anyway so I knew the color wires and the way they would go. And then I just had to wait for the clear shrink wrap, which is this. This is clear shrink wrap. I put it over the labels. That way they won't uh, get destroyed. They won't discolor. You can kind of see the, the clear shrink wrap right here. And they're going to stay good. You know, you can always read this. If it gets dirty, you just wipe it off. You can always read that. I just finished doing the clear shrink wrap on these guys as well. So here's a better look. So here's the uh, TPS plug. So now I left all the connectors off. Here's a better, I'm gonna give you guys an idea of how this is gonna work. So I took all the connectors off. They're all labeled, the injectors. The ground, I, uh, I cut off and I added a ring terminal because that looks better than the old one, which would be uh, this guy right here. I just cut it off, put all the grounds together. That's to into the one terminal. Now that's what that is. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna start sliding shrink wrap over all of this so I can run it all the way down here. So I can have a piece of shrink wrap waiting for me right here without shrinking it. Put the uh, split loom over this, make my little cuts because that's what I did here. I actually just cut a little slit out of the, the, uh, the split loom cut it because it, it's coming out in different sections, put a piece of shrink wrap over it, 
heated it up, and then that's how it's going to hold it like that. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Pull the uh, expandable or the split. God, I keep calling it expandable. Pull the split loom all the way. Once I get to these branches, I'm just going to get the scissors and make a little slit in it. Pull these guys out. Run more shrink wrap over on here because this is kind of like a transition where they all meet up. And then these are going to be all on their own. You'll see it when I'm done. So this is what the beginning stages look like once you start sliding your shrink wrap. So I slid the shrink wrap all the way to the end. This is a one inch piece of shrink wrap that I got to go over all the connectors. Now I got the half inch split loom. And if you look closely, you can actually kind of see where I gave it little slits so the wires can pull out. And then the rest of the split loom, it just kind of wraps all around the rest of the stuff. So that's why I really like the split loom because you could just split it open It'll coil really tight, and uh, so this section is ready. I can I can uh, heat this up to shrink wrap this right here. One of the good tips I can give you is just do section at a time. So everywhere you see new transitions or new branches where everything will branch off, kind of just stop there. So what I'm going to do now is just leave this section, shrink wrap this, and this back portion is kind of done. I might throw another piece of shrink wrap, maybe like right here to try to cover this, uh, this little slit so it doesn't get bigger. And then a piece of shrink wrap right here to cover this transition so these guys could branch off. And then from here, this is a little thinner than this section. So I might use like 3 8 uh, split loom to uh, cover this section. So a piece of shrink wrap here, a piece of shrink wrap here where all these branches meet and then this whole leg of the harness would be done. All right, I got the other leg done with uh, all the loom, all the shrink wrap I needed. I'm not putting the connectors on just yet, but I want to show you guys the transition. So shrink wrap here, some shrink wrap here. All these guys are where they're going to need to be. These are uh, the tran these are connections for the trans. So I've got VSS. I have the uh, reverse lockout over here. So they're all going to peg this way. Coming down this way, we have another shrink wrap with another transition right here. So you guys can, like you're understanding, every time something branches off, shrink wrap for, shrink, shrink wrap for the transition, it makes it look a little cleaner. So we have the uh, TPS here. This is the uh, IAC. I didn't label that because I already, I know what connector this is. The, uh, the map sensor. This are the uh, connections that connect to the charge harness for your alternator and stuff like that. Continuing to follow everything down, more of the loom, the split loom. Then we have another shrink wrap right here for another transition for all the fuel injectors and uh, the ground. So this whole leg is done. The coil, the coils section is done. Now my last section is uh, this way, all the way back to the firewall where the ECU connections are. I've left this one for the end because I'm kind of stuck on how I want to do this one just because it, it's really hard to try to push a piece of shrink wrap over these three guys. I don't want to deep pin each one of these connections, uh, especially this because I've wrapped all this around. It's gonna be really tight to, to pull shrink wrap over this big bulk section right here to get it to come all the way here. Now, I know they make um, T transition molded heat uh heat shrink boots so basically it's a whole it's a shrink boot that's a t so it'd go this way and this way it'd be a lot easier to do that if every connector was taken off and even if the pins were off so that way they wouldn't get snugged up on the on the boot i'm having a hard time finding the right size to get this a t transition and on top of that they're really expensive they're like 40 dollars just for one so i'm trying to figure out a way I'm gonna make this this transition right here. These three kind of look nice without using electrical tape. I got some ideas that I might try out, but I think what I'm gonna do for now is I'm gonna get like some two inch heat shrink so that way I can just pull it over each connector, get it all the way around. It needs to be a three to one shrink ratio. That way it's a two inch. I can shrink it down possibly to one inch to get all the way here and pops possibly another piece of shrink wrap back here and then the rest. Is going to be in the wire loom the split loom but i'm not too sure yet i need to figure that section out so i obviously just said i need to get more probably gonna take another day to finish this i'm almost done it's just that last section i'm just i'm really trying my best to make it look decent without making it look too tacky or putting any tape anywhere i've said that before but 
Carter gave me the okay to use felt tape. I have felt tape, I've used felt tape on my own personal harness. It works good and if it's only gonna be in this little section, I might be okay with doing it, but if I can find a transition, a better transition for this T section right here, I will, but for right now I'm gonna order that uh, two inch shrink wrap and we'll get back to this. We finally have everything we need to finish this harness. I'm telling you, this harness is getting done today. Like if I gotta work the whole day to get this harness done, it's getting done today. So my heat shrink that I ordered finally came in. The three quarter split loom finally came in and that's really all I was waiting for to finish this harness finally. I know this video's, for you guys it's been one video. For me it's been dragged on for like a week. So just check out what we got and we're gonna finish this once and for all. So I got the two inch heat shrink wrap. I went two inch because I needed to slide it over everything. So what I did was I just uh, depinned a couple more that were getting in the way, but I just overlaid the loom like this. So that way I could slide the two inch over this whole section, slid it all the way up, kind of put these together, bunched it. Now it's gonna stop right here. I have the three quarter split loom, as you can see, it uh, splits over, or it collapses tightly over this section because this section is thicker since we had to run the extra wiring. So all I'm gonna do now is push this all the way in under the shrink wrap, shrink wrap it, shrink wrap it here, run it all the way back probably to like right here because this is all gonna be inside the under the dash or behind the dash, you're not gonna see any of this. And uh, that's it, then we can just tidy it up. Again, I, I, didn't, I didn't get my T transition that I wanted to get for uh, this section right over here. So once this sh is shrink wrapped, it's, it's gonna be kinda like butt up like that. You are gonna see a little gap right here. Carter gave me the okay to use felt tape. I didn't want to, I'm gonna try one thing that I did find out or see online Basically, I might get another two inch section of heat shrink and uh, put a slit like halfway, not all the way, just slit it halfway so I could slide it over this section and hopefully hold the end when I heat it up. It'll just kind of compress and we'll try it out. If that doesn't work, I'm just going to use the felt tape. And is it great to finally see this harness completely done. So I finished the whole harness finally. It is 100% done. I put all the connectors back on. I finished this tree, this this tree, this T transition. Uh, I tried that heat, sh heat shrink method by slitting it uh, halfway, sliding it. it. Doesn't work. Well, as soon as you slit it and then you try to heat it, the whole shrink wrap just opens up all the way. So I uh, I put another piece of heat shrink, a heat shrink over it, felt taped it, put a couple zip ties. I don't do this for a living, guys. So I mean, just really. Cut me, cut me some break. I know when you look at this, that is my least favorite part of this whole harness. It's that transition. But everything else came out great. And uh, I'm gonna show you what it looks like finally. All done. Here's the final product of Carter's harness. Everything is loomed, heat shrinked. Uh, the connectors are cleaned. Here's the transition. Uh, just like I said, this is that felt tape. A couple of zip ties so the tape doesn't try to lift. More everything shrink wrapped over here, all of this. Here's our main section that runs into the firewall. This got a couple zip ties along the way. This is where I ended it, our ECU plugs. So this is uh, this is how it came out and I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. This is better than the one on my car, I have to say. And like I said, I cleaned the, uh, the connectors a little bit so they don't look as bad. They don't have as much grease in them. What I use, I just grab uh, one of my wipes here so just heavy duty cleaning wipes. I just try to get in all the little uh, crevices of them. Try to just make it look new. Make it almost look like it's a new harness. I mean, it's not a new harness. It's an uh, old harness that's reloomed. <laughs> that's, that's really all it is. Our fuel injectors, all of our labels, their heat shrink. So that, that was my really my favorite touch about doing this, was putting the, the clear heat shrink on these labels. And there's so much of a, of a glare, but there it is. It's on everything. Here's our... TPS so everything is the only one I didn't label was the uh, the IAC and that's just because I know which one that is so Yeah, I hope you guys learned something from this. I'm gonna go. I'll go over exactly what you need so for your main strands of cables quarter inch wire loom whether it's it's, it's uh, expandable or it's split loom quarter inch for these guys this section right here it's uh, this was half inch wire loom. So you're gonna use half inch here, half inch over here, 
this section where we added the extra wiring this is three quarter wire loom uh, same thing for our heat shrink wrap so I have I've used quarter inch half inch three eighths and three quarter and one inch heat shrink so you need all those sizes just some some transitions are bigger than others so you need different sizes and slide over like this was I believe a one inch and I use the three to one heat shrink when you're when you're looking to buy heat shrink and you see two to one three to one basically what that means is the size of the heat shrink will shrink either two times smaller or three times smaller to what it is before it's heated up so I use the three to one because you can get a lot tighter uh, shrinking when you use a lot bigger heat wrap so like I used two inch heat shrink as you saw on where that T transition is and it shrunk all the way down to the half inch or the three quarter that I needed on both ends so that's the three to one it just shrinks three times smaller than what it already started as I want to go I want to put it out there again I don't do this as a service like this is not obviously I, I don't uh, after doing this I, I realize why I haven't done it again but um, there are guys out there that do this for the RSX I mean really for K series uh, two guys that I know in particular that do this service and uh, I know them personally not personally but I know them uh, it's first one I know is Davy Davy DC5 I'll leave his Instagram right right here somewhere uh, he does this so you can send him your loom I think he stopped doing it right now because he's kind of backed up uh, whatever he charges I'm not really sure you can check his Instagram out send him a DM tell him I sent you that you, you know you want your harness done he'll help you out the other guy I know that does it is D Mossy. Again, I'll leave his Instagram right here somewhere. Uh, same thing. You send him your loom. He uh, just relooms it for you and he sends it back to you. It's Those guys, they've been doing it for a while. They pretty much got it down to where they can get it done in two days. I mean, they have all the material they need. I'm only doing this because I'm helping Carter out. I do it on my car. I'll, I'll help like Kenny or just kind of my close friends that they need it done. I'll do it for them, but I don't, I don't do this for a service. And... Uh, I'm not trying to make it seem like I'm the best one doing it because the hardest part about this was getting material. The actual looming process, it's just time consuming. It's not hard at all. You know, the deep pinning, that's, that's really easy. So I hope you guys kind of learned how to deep pin because I know some people are not sure how to deep pin or they're afraid. But hopefully I was able to kind of explain to you guys, show you it's not hard at all. And uh, once it's just a lot of time and what made, what took this process so long was just getting the heat shrink getting the wire loom like I, I didn't have enough of that if I had everything I needed it probably would have took me two three days max to get this done uh, the way you see it now and especially with everything that's going on that's what took the all the materials longer to arrive so I really hope you guys learned something from here you don't have to you don't have to pay somebody to do it but um, if you don't have the patience you should pay somebody to do it because it's, it's, it's just a lot of work so please, please give me a big thumbs up on this video if you guys learned something. Leave a comment down below. Uh, if you guys know where to, well, I mean, I know where to get the T transition, but it's to find one for a decent price. That's that's the thing. Uh, I might try to find one to do it on my harness. Try it out. Um, questions, comments, concerns, leave them down in the comments. Like the video, subscribe if you're new, and I will catch you guys in the next video. And hopefully you guys see in future videos when Carter installs this. I'll get his reaction. He still hasn't seen it yet. I'm just, I've sent him a couple pictures, but I'll just film it when I finally give it to him and see what he says. Stay motivated and keep making those streets louder.